Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to manipulate um, your photographs in uh, Adobe Photoshop to sort of simulate a uh, depth of field effect. Um, for those of you who do not know what a depth of field is in your photographs, it is uh, when you see pictures that have foreground images that are completely crisp and the background um, is, is blurred out, creating sort of a... Um, you get an emphasis on your foreground images. You can certainly do the reverse of that as well. Uh, photographers use uh, their photography settings on their cameras to get this effect. Uh, but if, if, you, if you're not good enough with photography to uh, make that happen, or if you've simply not had that effect or had the chance to get that effect through your camera, uh, you, can, you can make those changes in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just get started. What you want to do is you want to take your photo and uh, open it up into Photoshop like I have here. As you can see, pretty much everything is crisp and clear in here. It might be a little bit more blurry in the background, but not really. Let's say that we want to have our focus be on this first post here in, uh, in our image. Um, what we'll want to do is we'll take our background layer and we're going to make a copy of it. So you can press Control J on your keyboard or drag the layer down into your new um, layer button down here on your layers palette. Now we have a, a new layer and I'll just rename it uh, depth or you can name it whatever you want. Uh, I would just do that so that I always have my background layer to go back to in case I make a mistake. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to enter into quick mask mode. You can press this button on your tool palette or you can press Q on your keyboard to enter into quick mask mode. And then what I want you to do is select your gradient tool out of your tool palette. If you see the paint bucket tool over there, just click down on the paint bucket and uh, hold. And then you should see the gradient uh, bucket or tool uh, pop up and I want you to select that. Uh, with, in quick mask mode, with our uh, new layer selected, we want to make a selection. And I'm going to make a selection from the bottom edge of the, the thing, the picture, excuse me, to somewhere in the top third of the image. And I'm just going to go right to my horizon line and I'm holding down shift to make sure that this stays straight and I'm going to go ahead and uh, make my selection there and as you can see this is about what I have. Uh, you should have a very similar selection or uh, certainly you can play out your own image however you want. I'm going to exit quick mask mode by pressing Q on my keyboard or you can uh, select that same button down here and you can see this is uh, your selection. By uh, doing a gradient in quick mask mode, and uh, I should add that uh, you want your gradient going from black to clear. That is, uh, that's very important. Foreground to, um, to transparent. That's very important. Um, but by doing that, you make it so that, uh, that you have kind of a feathered selection. And I'll show you right now. Uh, because the next thing we're going to do is go up to Filter. And go down to blur and to gosh and blur and as you can see and what I mean by a feathered selection is that uh, down here it's not quite getting as blurred as the areas up here and I'll just show you I'll, I'll extend my blur to 250 pixels to show you exactly what I mean um, a lot less blur up here than I'm getting up here and that's my feathering that I got from that gradient selection that I that I chose I'm going to go ahead and want to uh, do quite a bit less on the blurring. I want to do, I want you to know that it's blurred, but I don't, I want you to still know what's in the background. You can certainly play around with your, uh, your own images. Uh, something like this might be about right, and I have about 20 pixels selected, and I'll click OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and select my marquee tool, or you could uh, click M on the keyboard, and I'm going to go ahead and deselect my selection that I have. Uh, as you can see, some of these images in my foreground are blurred, and the images in my foreground shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be blurred, especially the one that I want to create emphasis on, which is this one. So what I'll do is I'll create a, qu a quick mask on my layer here, and I do that by uh, clicking my quick mask button in my layers uh, palette. And what I want to do is uh, go ahead and zoom in on that. I can press Z on my keyboard or select my eyeglass here. I'm going to zoom right in on the on the selection that I want. And I'm going to select my eraser tool. With my eraser tool selected and my quick mask selected, I can start erasing on that pole. I want the hardness set somewhere around 50 or 
and I want my brush size to be about this a little bit smaller than the pole probably actually so what I'll do is I'll just start erasing to make this crispy and clear and if you erase a little bit too much you can just brush it brush it back excuse me and you can brush it back um, and that's why we create the, the, the uh, quick mask so that you're not doing anything permanent and I'm just going to do this real quick for you okay something kind of like this certainly you'd want to take a little bit more time with yours as you can see I'm getting a little bit of sky in there um, if I was doing this for a, a client I would definitely take a little bit more time get it perfect you don't want to jeopardize your, uh, your money okay so as you can see I've, uh, I've erased that selection now that pole's uh, really kind of popping out there and I'm just going to do a little bit more right there okay and uh, if, you, if you find that some of the grass is getting blurred that you don't want that blurred you can just make your brush a little bit bigger and go ahead and erase through some of this grass and pick up more detail in the grass as well okay and uh, so that's pretty much it now I have this pole uh, that is uh, very crispy and clear and I have a blur that's kind of lightly going from the the close things in my picture to getting more and more substantial as it gets farther and farther away and that's how exactly it would work uh, if, if you did it through your camera so uh, and, and that's that's why we did that gradient to make it to give it that uh, that same effect you certainly could blur the whole background but it's just not gonna look realistic if it's not coming from your foreground and getting uh, more and more blurry towards your background anyway um, I hope you learned something. Uh, please click the like button on this video if you like this video. Um, if you're watching it from my blog, uh, please go to YouTube and click the like button. Or um, if you're watching it from YouTube, please feel free to check out the other videos on my blog. Uh, there's a link to my blog in the, the, the description of this video. It's Glaze Folio Design Blog. Uh, and please uh, try to find me on Facebook and Twitter and, uh, and tell your friends. Thank you very much.